It took me years to find community. Once I did, I knew that that's what was gonna carry me and help me to be who I was. And once I found that, I knew that I wanted it to be something that other people could experience and share. And so in 2009, I found it with a partner of mine, uh, a collective called Brooklyn Boyhood. When I was coming into my own and realized I gravitated towards more masculine traits or what I thought were more masculine traits. So embodying like misogyny or embodying like, you know, aggression, which is not me. And once I really understood that the way that I move through the world is different, really has made me understand that I have a responsibility. Um, masculine privilege was hard to swallow for me. So discovering the duality in myself was another thing that, that really fueled the Brooklyn Boyhood Collective. So I'm not one single person. I'm made up of so many different things. Because I want to wear a hat doesn't mean I don't have my, my, my nails painted under my feet. They're actually, I was lying, my, my, my feet are busted. But, but it's possible, you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> kind of offer a voice in the LGBTQ community that um, is really focused on like uplifting values around masculinity that are positive and kind of redefining what that means, building healthy spaces for us, for ourselves and for our communities. So that can look like parties or, you know, healing spaces or an anthology or workshops. And we try to uplift the visibility of our folks and just put dope shit out to the world. And at the same time, we're all a family and we're all raising children together and traveling and um, taking care of each other on a daily basis. So it's, you know, we do a lot of shit. Especially now after like all the Orlando stuff. It's always felt urgent, but more recently, like I've been feeling called to like do so much more um, in regards to, you know, what we try to bring to the world as a collective. Or at least like spend my mornings crying about it and trying to um, figure out how to just keep going for myself. And so it feels like. <clears throat> The work is just me getting up every day. It's just been like emotional few weeks. Um, and just, I guess because of just who we are as a collective and everybody individually just going through their own shit. Um, it's been even more trying and difficult, but also beautiful. I mean, I got like so many texts and phone calls and like, all this other shit um, around that time. And people have just really been like uplifting us and really being like, yo, we know y'all have been like doing this nightlife thing and organizing and like all this shit for so many years. And really, thank you. And how can we continue to do this? Cause that shit is hard sometimes. Um, having to, you know, like we see a lot of shit, like the beautiful stuff, but also the terrible stuff. So, you know, I spend a lot of my time just really trying to be creative and make people feel like they have a space to be, that they can feel like they can be themselves and be like really living their lives fully, which we have to struggle to do, which is crazy. <laughs> I feel like a connector in a lot of ways. Like I'm often building bridges um, across communities, developing programs or festivals or events or anything that is quote unquote community based is really just about gathering people with purpose and with a lot of intention and a lot of relationship building and just really guiding things and offering things, but also allowing things to manifest as they should. 
Um, I feel like the arts is the key to a lot of the questions that we have unanswered. You know, the artists in the world, the poets, the writers, um, the folks that don't even know that they're poets and writers. <laughs> We have so much to offer, so many assets, and so many things that are getting co-opted all the time. When I'm doing community stuff, it's always just about uplifting ourselves and like doing it on our own for us. Right. <laughs> Fubu, Fubu, that's it. <laughs>